Hey friends, Andrea here. I'm going to be narrating this little clip and I was just sharing the lip balm containers I'm going to make. I have some melts, kind of like melt and pour lip balm and a little measuring cup. And then this is the lip balm flavoring. I'm using the strawberry flavor. And these are things that I all, I bought all this stuff at uh, Michael's, I believe. So I'm just um, measuring the lip balm base. Uh, into my measuring cup. You basically just either melt it, uh, you can melt it on the stove, or you can melt it in the microwave, it doesn't matter. And I ended up using about half of this container that I bought at Michael's. And you can find it in the aisle where you can buy all the other soaping stuff. And I just scooped it out with a little um, disposable, like plastic cutlery, plastic knife. So I'm microwaving it right now, um, and while I'm doing that, I am preparing the lip balm flavoring. Uh, I bought it in a package of two. It came with strawberry and mint, and I'm using strawberry for this one. And then I'm stirring my melted lip balm with a little uh, wooden skewer. And uh, just because those are disposable, I can just take them out of a package and stir. So now I have, this is a, some cosmetic grade mica. And when I say cosmetic grade, I mean, it's literally makeup <laughs> that I've had that I got. Um, it's kind of like a nice color that's just in between a pink and a red color. I thought it would make nice coloring for this strawberry lip balm that I'm making. And then I am always measuring the temperature and just stirring a ton to make sure that it doesn't kind of uh, goop up, I guess. So there I am adding all the droplets and the instructions on the container will tell you how many droplets to add. Because I was making a huge batch, I added a lot. So this is what it looks like after I've got the flavoring in it and I've got the, um, the coloring in it, the mica. So I started pouring it into the containers. Um, and I will say, I did end up going back after um, attempting to pour it just directly from this little um, measuring cup because that was a total disaster and I would not recommend doing that. What I did instead was I got a disposable pipette and um, I have since purchased or, or actually received as a gift a set of reusable glass pipettes that I can clean with a little brush cleaner. But um, I found that to be a much more effective way of filling these tubes. And I've seen online that people have uh, like a little tray that they can set their tubes into to make pouring into the tubes a lot easier and to make it easier to clean up, but I ended up just putting them into um, one of the empty cavities in my soap molds. And uh, since it's silicone, it kind of hugged them or held them in place pretty well, so I didn't have to worry about them tipping over. So here is the pipette, the disposable pipette. And I, I got it to a, a pretty high temperature. Just I just followed the instructions on the container, but then I filled the pipette and dripped it into the lip balm tube. And I tried to make sure that I got it kind of all the way to the top. And before I filled up the lip balm tubes, I did make sure to um, kind of spray them down with rubbing alcohol to kind of sterilize them. And I did make sure that they were twisted all the way to the bottom. So the reason why I like this method is because um, you can be a little bit more precise and it's not as messy and there are some areas some things in there that were like um, The the base the lip balm base kind of uh, I Don't know it just like either didn't melt well or it got stuck together with some of that mica powder and it, it formed like a chunk so it was easier to kind of take it out of my pipette before I started pouring it in. The tricky thing about using a pipette is that you have to work pretty quickly to fill your tubes 
before your lip balm starts to um, reharden again because it will once it gets back to closer to room temperature it will go ahead and start to harden up again as it should but if you don't work quickly it can harden while it's still in the pipette um, which isn't great the other thing I noticed and I don't know if how or if there's a really easy way to solve this but maybe somebody who has more experience can let me know in the comments but I did notice that my lip balms didn't all dry with an even top some some of them had like little indents where the center um, the little twisty part is in the middle and has like a little divot so um, that didn't really bother me because I was making these as gifts for some friends um, it was I was making a bunch of lip balms as a party favor for my birthday um, and I did a virtual birthday party and I sent out the lip balms in a little goodie bag kit to all my recipients and the theme was strawberry <laughs> and it was a spot at home so I wanted to just kind of make everybody feel like they were really pampering themselves so the the custom lip balm was part of that so you can see it's just me filling up the pipette a whole bunch of times um, I got a lot of compliments on them even though it wasn't like my own recipe per se like I just got the the base and then added the, the coloring and the flavoring myself. It was a very easy craft and I could see doing this with like uh, with kids or something like that. Um, as long as you're just all making kind of the same the same stuff. I kept one of these lip balms for myself and I was happy with the color that I got as a result. Uh, because it was almost totally transparent when I put it on. There's not a lot of color payoff from just the mica alone. And uh, so I would just say, uh, do some research and figure out what you want to create. So after, uh, you just let it set and it dries. And as you can see, some of them dried a little bit better than others but uh, that's how it turned out and later I went out and printed some lip balm labels that I ordered off of Amazon and I packaged them up and shipped them off to my little guests so that's how I made the lip balms and uh, thanks for watching guys